and Dwight Lewis, and we're taking a walk through the world. Well, today is Friday. Uh, today is Friday. It is the 3rd of May, 2013. We're having a great day. It's TGIF, as we used to say back in the days, which means today for me, now that I'm with Christ, thank God I am free. Well, it's great to have you here. We're going to have a really exciting show we're doing today. I'm going to do a show today on wrong is wrong and right is still right. We're going to be studying a lot of different scriptures. We're going to be coming from the uh, book of uh, Revelations. We're going to talk some from the 22nd chapter of Revelations. We'll probably go a few other places there. We're also going to be looking over in the book of Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to also go to some other notes that I have here. I thank you and welcome you for coming and being here with me. God bless you. I, I do hope that you are blessed by this radio program today and that you are uh, encouraged in your walk with Christ. Uh, before I get started in this program, what I always like to do, I like to uh, invite the Lord to come in and have his way in this radio program. So if you will, if you will go to prayer with me, that would be a wonderful thing. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Now, O oh Lord, you alone, you are our heart's desire, and we long to worship you. Now, Father, as we go forth, we ask that we decrease as you increase in this program. Father, we ask that the meditations of our heart and the words of our mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Father, have your way. We thank you for what you've done, for what you're going to do, and what you're doing right now. Father, we ask that someone's life is touched, that someone's heart is pricked, that someone's mind is changed, and someone's spirit is enlightened by the teaching that we bring from your word. We thank you right now, Father, for all things great and small. We lift these prayers up to you. In the precious name of Jesus, the anointed Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, I'm going to go in a, a couple different directions today. Well, the reason behind this being, I'm videoing this for the first time ever. And I don't know how the video is going to come out, how it's going to turn out. But I pray that it comes out fairly good. We're also broadcasting this live on blog talk radio and we're also doing this live on Spreaker so for all of those people and those listeners who follow us we thank you we do pray that you continue to pray for this ministry and that God will continue to allow the anointed teachers that he has there to bring forth great words and wisdom just to come from the Bible for a moment I want to take you to uh, some scriptures that I have Right versus wrong, right and wrong, uh, verses from the Bible. In James chapter 4, verse 17, it tells us, Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? John chapter 3, verse 19 through 21 says, And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and the people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked hates, who, those who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Listen what it says here in Colossians. It says in Colossians 3 and 17, In whatever you do in word or deed, do everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through him. In Mark 7, 20 through 23, the Lord our Christ said, 
What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, evil, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and they defile a person. In our society at this time, we have a lot of people who are going through this thing of talking about this sin and that sin. Two of the biggest sins that we have that are in the forefront in the paper daily are the sins of homosexuality and the sin of abortion. Yes, there are two major sins, both of them having great uh, consequences on the mental spiritual health of people but we have to understand that although they are great and abominable sin there are some other sin that are right on par with them cheating stealing Jesus just talked about them. the deceit the sensuality the evil, the envy the slander the pride the foolishness Paul talked about them over in the book of Romans chapter 1 our uh, sister and teacher uh, has been talking about those things it says over here starting in uh in in verse 28 excuse me 29 it says being filled with unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, covenant breakers, without understanding, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Paul and Christ both named plenty. Peter named some things. John, I mean, it's, it, I mean, if we get into the Bible, we find that over and over again, there are many things that are mentioned that will prevent you, one, from getting into the kingdom of God, and two, from walking in a right relationship with Jesus. Our Lord is holy. He tells us, be ye holy, for he is holy. That's not just a great little saying that we say, so as the people would be uh okay with it. It's a great saying because it's true. We have the ability to walk in a spirit of holiness. How do we do this? How do you do this, you ask me, teacher? Well, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. See, God sees the heart. Man looks at the outside. God sees the heart. And when he sees the heart, he fills you with the Holy Spirit. Remember about the, the men in, in, in the household of Cornelius over in the book of, uh, of Acts. It says, and God saw their hearts and he filled them with the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, these men have yet to be baptized and already they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. In order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be born again. It says in the book of uh, Revelations, chapter 22, we'll go over in uh, verse 10. It says, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. He says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, the kingdom of God. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and make a lie. 
He says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Do you not know that people are running around here and they are trying to call right wrong and wrong right? There's no way you can tell me in any shape, form, or fashion that people who practice active sin, who practice the lifestyle of homosexuality, who practice the lifestyle of fornication, those who are involving themselves in the sex with beyond before marriage, those who are actively involved in adultery, those who are actively cheating, those who are lying out both sides of their mouth, they too are in the same category as the homosexual and as the abortion doer. God has not put a level on sin. Man has. We have to understand wrong is wrong, no matter how you look at it. Right is right. Jesus just talked about it in the book of Revelation chapter 22. But let me take you another place. Because I want you to understand the reasoning and, the, and, and, and all the things that go with this. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 from the Amplified Bible says that the word of God speaks, the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating into the dividing line of the breath of life the soul, and the immortal spirit, and the joints, and the marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing, sifting, analyzing, and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart, which is the mind and the emotion. Wrong is just wrong. No matter how you look at it, no matter what it is, quit trying to put levels on wrong. Quit trying to make somebody else's wrong seems worse than the wrong that you're doing because I'm not having an abortion. I'm just cheating on my wife. That's wrong. I'm not I'm not a homosexual. I'm just I'm I'm just having sex with my girlfriend. That's wrong. You know? I don't care how you look at it. Wrong is wrong. See, it ceases to amaze me how many Christians walk in blatant immorality fornication, adultery, and go all out to justify their sin instead of repenting and doing an about face. See, part of being born again consists of you turning, which is the repent. Jesus, what did, what did he say in the book of Matthew? Turn with me real quick. Put, a, put your finger in your Bible. Turn over to Matthew. And let's listen to what G, what first what Matthew's what uh, John said in Matthew chapter three. It said in uh, starting in the first verse, it says, and in those days John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter four verse seventeen. Listen to the first words that Christ our Lord says. When he started his ministry, it says, and from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to turn away from. It means to turn away from the lifestyle that you formerly walked in and lived in. See, Remember what I said, when the Lord saw their hearts, he filled them with the Holy Spirit. We have to get back to teaching this, the Bible. We need to quit teaching people this word of faith things. We need to quit teaching people all of this other stuff and get back to teaching them the word of God. You must repent. You must come to believe in Christ. 
See, when you do these things, when you believe that Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for your sins and that he was buried and he was raised after three days and he ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. When you believe these things, when you confess it with your mouth that you, Jesus is Lord, when you believe these things and you confess it with your mouth and you repent and you turn from your wicked ways and you start to walk in the ways of Christ and you are baptized both in the Holy Spirit and in water, you will not continue to walk in blatant, willful, immoral sin. See, there are Christians out there right now who are caught up in blatant immorality that will take a chance to refute what they're doing to justify their sin. See? You must always have your, 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 your armor on. See, it tells us, it tells us, look, to flee temptation. The word flee means to escape, to abscond, to run away, to break out, to take flight, to run off. See? It tells us in the book of James, submit unto God, resist the evil, and it will flee. But see, we too are to get away from the temptation that should, could overtake us. Because as it says, that's what I was getting ready to go to in the book of Galatians, chapter 6. It tells us that uh, when a man be overtaken in his fault, you which are spiritual restore, such as one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. See, Satan wants to sift. Remember what Jesus said to Satan, to, uh, to Peter. He said, Peter, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. See, Jesus prayed for him that he would be strengthened. In the spirit. See, remember, they, Jesus didn't, when he told him, he told him, go into, 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 into Jerusalem and go to, and stay there until the power comes, until the spirit comes upon you. Then you will have power to go forth and do this witness and minister. See, you got people out here witnessing and ministering to, to whatever, and they don't have any Holy Spirit power. Remember what happened to the seven sons of Siva? See, they, they they were out there and they were doing this thing. And, and that, that demon came up and said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? And thrashed them. No Holy Spirit power. See, that Holy Spirit, see, when you are full of the Holy Spirit's power, that demon recognizes you and he gets out of your way. See, because he knows that he can't tempt you. He knows that you will not succumb. You will not give in to that wrong. And you will call wrong for what it is wrong. And you will stand for what is right because wrong is wrong and right is still right. See, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5, it tells us about wrong being wrong. See, and it tells us what we're fighting it tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical. These are weapons, and this from the Amplified. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead everyone, excuse me, lead every thought and purpose away captive unto the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. See, it's telling us what we are fighting. We are fighting a war that is spiritual. It is an all out spiritual attack on the Lord God. Remember what they said, what Jesus told them uh, when, when he sent out the, 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 uh, the disciples for their mission. He said, they don't, if they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Let me turn over here real quick. I want to get that for you. I think that's Luke chapter 10. 
Yes. Harabosha. Excuse me, Matthew. Let me get there. Let me get there. I want. I want what Jesus told them. Uh, he says, "Over in uh, uh, okay." It's over in Matthew chapter 10. And I'm looking for where he says this. And I want this. I want this. It's how, I want this. Let your peace return. Uh, midst the wolves. I'm coming all off of my teaching. Let me do this real quick. I saw my sister there. Let me bring her in. As I do this. Hello, sister. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm coming off of my teaching a little bit. I wanted to go into something else. Um, anything that you want to share with us? Feel, feel free. Okay. Yes. right it's not going to work and that's what he said over there in Luke chapter 10 I found what I was looking for it's verse 16 he told him he said to them he that heareth you heareth me he that despises you despises me and he that despises me despises him that sent me the world and the system, the system that we're fighting against in this spiritual battle, it hates, it actually hates uh, what we are and who we are. Uh, for those of you who were on this other, uh, you didn't hear what the sister said, but she spoke to this. She said that in Colossians, it speaks very much to what we're talking about here. Over oh, those of you who are listening on Spreaker and on the video, we want you to understand that we're still working together with this. So there's going to be a couple of seconds of dead spot there, but we will fill that in in later times when I learn how to mend all this together. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some new stuff, sister. So, but God has said that we are to follow what he said. Listen to what Jesus told him to do. And, and, and this, is, this is happening right now. Jesus said in, in, in Matthew chapter 10, starting with verse 17, I'm going to go past what he told him because he said, well, just go back to 16. He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. He said, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. See? Be wise as serpents. That means know what you're about to face, but don't fight it. Now, now see, when, and, and I tell people that when we fight these things, we have to fight these things as Christ called them. We fight it with the word of God. We don't have to raise our hands up to, to, to beat somebody down. 
We don't have to grab our guns, our knives, and, and cut and, and shoot anyone. We just need to give them the word of God. Put the word of God on them. When you start putting the word of God on that demon and you're full of the Holy Ghost power, that demon doesn't like it and it will shriek and flee. As I said, he says, but be, it told him, he says, but beware of men. For they will deliver you up to councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you at that same hour what you shall speak. For it shall not be you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaks in you. See, you don't have to worry about what to say when these people start coming at you and they ask you these stupid off-brand questions about how, how is you going to say that the Bible speaks against these uh, things that would you do. You don't have to worry about it because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. It will tell you to speak forth in the in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it will tell you the, 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 the exact scriptures. I'm going to tell you, there are times when I'm teaching and the, and the spirit gets so full in this place that suddenly, I mean, scriptures that I wasn't even thinking about start to come. I mean, they just start flooding. They come in such a way and I, and I have to contain myself or else I'll run away from the teaching that I'm trying to do. But this is how the, the Holy Spirit does. See, and we have to be able to, 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 to direct this at those who are coming against us. See, this is an attack on the very essence of who we are as Christians. We saw recently that those uh, civilian employees in the Pentagon are trying to make it illegal for not for the Muslim, not for the Jew, not for uh, any other religion, but for you to share your Christianity in the military. This from a country that says it is built upon Christian values. See, but we have to understand what is this all about? These things must happen. We have told, I've said this many times again, except there be a falling away. Except there be a falling away. It has to be. It has to be a great falling away. And in order to fall away, you have to first have once believed. Jesus said that there will be a great falling away. He said that people will come to him in that day. And they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not uh, what, preach in your name? Did we not teach in your name? Did we not do these things in your name? And Jesus will say, I wait for me, those of you who, who, who you workers of iniquity. Iniquity being willful, intentional wrongdoing. Do you not think that those of you who are out there practicing adultery, practicing fornication, practicing homosexuality, living that life of fornication, whereas when you become pregnant, you go out and get an abortion. Do you not think that Jesus is going to accept you if you don't repent and turn from those wicked ways? The, the Holy Spirit has been so heavy upon me to tell you that we must pray like never before. We in the body of Christ must pray like never before. Because God, he, he wants us to understand the, the depth of the depravity that is going on around us. There is such, I mean, it, it is such a heaviness. I mean, the, everything that is right, they're calling it wrong. Everything that is wrong, they're trying to make it right. The reason behind marriage was for procreation. God said it. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Men and men cannot multiply. A woman and a woman cannot multiply. Let me say this, and, and this is for those of you who are going to be cut off on the speaker system. God is not happy with what's going on. Not at all. He's not happy at all. And he's going to call to judgment. He's going to call to task. You workers of iniquity. Thank you for joining me on Spreaker. We're going to continue on with Blog Talk Radio.